family, and I was baptized at Our Lady, Queen of the Universe, parish of Barbados. I grew up in a parish in Hillside, New Jersey, Christ the King, the son of Mary. I went to Notre Dame for undergraduate studies, our mother. When I was a monk at Newark Abbey, the church was St. Mary's. I was ordained a deacon at Immaculate Conception Cathedral, and I now serve at Immaculate Heart of Mary. So today is the, the feast day of our parish as well. So I look at my whole life, literally, from the time I was born, and oh, and here's this. I'm a priest today. Here's this. My mother told me this before she died, which I did not know until 2009, about a month before she died. She was, they thought she was unable to have children. She was about five feet one, probably 120 pounds. She would have a miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And she got pregnant with me. So they put her in the hospital on total bed rest for, for most of the pregnancy. She prayed to St. Gerard that she would have this was if you let me have this child, I will give it to you, what she said. And I never knew this. She said when the Angelus bells rang, I would jump in. And I never knew that until a month before my mother died. So literally since the womb, there's been this thread of the Blessed Virgin Mary in my life. But how it all came together for me, my mother died. Because of our situation in the home with my father, and very ugly divorce, and I didn't speak to my father for 18 years. It's very close to my mom. <clears throat> she came to live with us the last three years of her life in Portland. And I, by then, she was permanently disabled. She had to use a walker. She was on oxygen 24 7. When I took her mask, you know, I get the wheelchair and the oxygen and and she sit in the front row, brothers in the front row, like that was her seat. You know how we are, as Catholics. And if anybody tried to sit there, get up, that's the deacon mother seat. And we had this little thing that we did. Whenever I got up to read the gospel, she would look at me, and I'd look at her, and we exchanged a little mother-son contact before I read the gospel. That was our business every time. The weekend that she died, I was speaking at a conference in Texas. And then I was supposed to fly to EW10 and film. That would be my third television series. So I got there. I was having dinner with the producer when the phone rang. And it was an emergency position saying my mom had a massive heart attack and was in a coma. And they didn't think she was going to make it through the night. As I was talking to the doctor, my phone, my wife was calling, my father Nicholas Castle was calling. So I talked to them, called my siblings, and then I got another call that she got. And EW10 was great. They got me on the plane. If you were following me back then, remember, Father Wade and he says, had the mass the morning my mom died, and I did it at that mass before I got on the plane and flew back for the funeral. And I was holding it together pretty well because since when Pop left, I was the one that took over with her and the family. So I, was, I had a bit more guys than me until, until we came to read the gospel. I got up and just out of sheer habit, I looked at her. Mm. She wasn't there. And I looked over at the casket and I realized I will never see my mother sitting there ever again. And I literally slumped over in the ammo and started to cry uncontrollably. My brother, who was born in Barbados with me, came up, he put his arm around me and said, we need you. Ever since we were kids, you were there for us. And we need you to be strong for us now. And he went and sat down. So I said a quick Hail Mary, pulled myself together, read the homily, I read the 
that's the reason I'm leaving Barry Brown. For months after that, every time I walk into that room, I cry. Still smell like her. All her stuff was still there. It felt like she'd be coming through the door any minute. And then the reading came to the site of the presentation of the Lord. And it was like I heard that gospel for the first time. This child is destined for the fall on the rise of many, and the sign that he's spoken against. And the sword shall pierce her own soul, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid in. And I thought, Mary understands what I'm going through right now. It's not just a matter of losing someone that you love. I lost someone I was physically part of. I came out of my mother. Jesus came out of his mother. Mary understands what it's like to lose someone like that. So I said to myself, what if I lay my broken and bruised heart through the pure soul and laid it next to the immaculate heart of Mary? So where did I begin to do that? Adoration. Eucharistic adoration. Which makes perfect now it makes perfect sense. People follow in our said yesterday about the flow. Say the Lord Jesus distributed graces by Mary and by mercy. So I was praying before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament for the graces of the Blessed Mother to come and comfort me, to bring healing to my heart that was moved by the death of my mother. The heart and soul of the Blessed Mother that was pierced by the sword of suffering is an entry into the inexhaustible source of all understanding for God's saving mysteries that affect the entire world and each one of us personally. The lesson for us is this. By making ourselves vulnerable before the heart of love, through the pure soul of the Virgin Mary, we can truly unite our hearts to the heart of Christ, through her immaculate heart, and make more fully ours what he accomplished on the cross, intimate, personal, loving, and life-giving union with the Father. In his suffering and death, Christ's humanity became the free and perfect instrument of the Father's divine and merciful love, which desires only one thing, our salvation. Mary was a faithful witness to the fact that even in the darkest hour of our lives, God's love knows no end. Even in the hardships, of everyday life, God's love knows no bounds. And I've seen that beyond this pilgrimage. I see that all the people helping George. I see the divine mercy and the love. Even in suffering and death, God's love holds nothing back. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Mary points the way to Jesus. God has shown both the depth of his love and his abiding respect for the dignity of our human nature by becoming one of us. Through Mary, God wants us to know that he understands what it's like to experience great sadness and humiliation. Unbelievable pain and suffering, and even the darkness of death itself. God wants us to know through the back of the heart of Mary that we are not alone. And by becoming incarnate in the womb of Mary, Jesus shows us that a human being like ourselves, when in love, she humbles herself before God and opens her heart to His holy will devoting herself completely to the 
discipleship in Christ. We too can share in the divine life of the Trinity and participate in God's saving plan for the destiny of all humanity. And I'm going to miss Amen. Hopefully that's a that's an acclamation. And I would be remiss for not ending this homily. Not mentioning that I don't think it's just a coincidence that Roe versus Wade was overturned on the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And on the vigil of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is not a time for, we can celebrate, yes, but we cannot sit back and relax and think that our work is done. We have to continue That's right. to fight for the right to life. Yes, for our unborn children. Because it's still going to be legal in, in all the states, or many states. And we got to think about the elderly who made this to suicide. We gotta think about a complete culture of life that we still need to stand strong for. And under the inspiration of St. Martin Mary Alamo, whose body, we're celebrating, we're celebrating this feast with her body, her present with us. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest vehicles of divine mercy. No coincidence that God put us here today, at this time, in all of our lives. So let us continue to be diligent, let us continue to be faithful, and let us continue to respond like the Blessed Mother. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Amen.